During this Rotary year, a number of the district governors ha have raised funds towards an organisation called Wheel Power. Wheel Power supply wheelchairs to disabled athletes. And these athletes can be racers around the track, they can be basketball players, or they can be rugby players. And last month, Sheila and I visited Stoke Mandeville. And the, the arena there is managed by Wheel Power. And we had saw the fascinating facilities for able-bodied and disabled people. And we actually saw a shooting competition going on, or some practice for a competition. And even though they were in a wheelchair, they got tens and tens and tens in the middle, in the middle ring. And all the time I was there, I was a, a man, a minded, a reminded by the uh, words of Anne Walthula Strike on Friday, where she said, she's not disabled, she's alternatively abled. Now, we were hoping to have with us this, after, uh, this morning uh, Martin McElhatton, Michael, who is the chief executive of Wheel Power, and sadly, he is unwell. But we're delighted that Kevin Baker, the chairman of Wheel Power, is here with us this morning. He came back from Helsinki just recently and got this message that would he come along. And coming on stage with him is a lady who can solve problems both physically and emotionally, uh, District Governor, the Reverend Debbie Hodge. So please welcome Debbie and Kevin. see everyone. Good morning conference. Good morning. It's a great pleasure for Kevin and I to be here. Um, I met Kevin at the torch lighting <coughs> ceremony that was at Stoke Mandeville at the start of the torch relay for the Paralympic Games and our work continues and this morning we have a very short time simply 10 minutes and it's telling us time oh no we, we, we're okay now they're just setting the clock. <laughs> I think we're okay now. We're on. Uh, we're going to spend just a, a few minutes talking to you about what Rotary's been doing, how Wheel Power is part of Rotary Wheel Appeal, and how the whole thing knits together, we hope, to inspire a generation. Could we have the first slide? Uh, this is a slide. If you look at the background, you'll notice the golden flowers. They were part of the wonderful planting at the Olympic Park, and Rotary took its theme as Rotary Goes for Gold. What the, one of the key strap lines for the Games was inspire a generation. Rotary has been inspiring generations for a long time through its youth competitions. In 2012, we worked really hard to get the inspire mark for young photographer, youth speaks, and young writer. That inspire mark was commented on by Sebastian Coe, Lord Coe, although I'm not quite sure how many titles he has now. Um, and he said, the inspire programme is ensuring the legacy of the 2012 Games starts now, as projects like RIBI Youth Speaks are enabling people to be part of the Games. And that was one of the key things that Rotary wanted to do. We wanted to make sure that communities all around the country, not just those around London and those surrounding areas, were part of the Games. One way it happened was through the torch relay. Rotarians and people connected with Rotary, supported by Rotary, were torch bearers. Um, you will notice the picture at the bottom is of District Governor Mike Thorne running his leg near Sevenoaks. But the torch relay allowed Rotarians to engage with the community and take the games to that community. They were marshals, they organised events. I do wonder whether it was the biggest continuous community service operation we've ever done in these islands. But I didn't contact the Guinness World Record to find out whether we'd actually achieved that. One of the other ways that people engaged, Rotary engaged, was within the community. Hamble Community College got the Inspire Mark for their work, and we managed to get a display of the young photographer from District 1260 up at Stoke Mandeville for the duration of the Games. 
You were asked on Friday afternoon if any of you were games makers. I can't see whether there's people here or not, but I hear the noises, so there are. But games makers were crucial to the success of creating an atmosphere. And many Rotarians were that. And one day I was on the Olympic Park and I met many Rotarians who were doing sterling job, stewarding, sorting out medal ceremonies, working in back room, running um, results across. It was absolutely fantastic. Rotary at its best. And if you were to talk to any of the games makers, they will have a fountain of stories to share with you about what they did. One of the key elements of Rotary is fellowship. And fellowship has to happen wherever Rotarians gather. And Rotarians gathered at Rotary in London headquarters and at Weymouth, the sailing site, and enjoyed each other's company while being part of the Games. One of the RIBI Olympic Committee aims was to get children to the Games, preferably disabled children to the Paralympics. The Rotary Clubs of Hemel Hempstead and Burke Hampstead took 200 children and they were May, their um, project was part of a documentary on Channel 4. So we did the PR bit as well as the community bit. Work for Purpose was the only project on, within the Games Parks that raised funds. Rotarians and charity partners raised upwards of uh, 52,000 uh, 52, pounds and are working with Rotary Clubs and within Rotary Foundation. And the potential project money from that, as you can see, is £100,000. That was unique to the London Games. Rotarians supported all sorts of athletes, Greg Rutherford, the Knott brothers. But key to building the legacy was the Rotary Wheel appeal. There's some shots there to just indicate a little of what we do, and Kevin will now take over and talk about some of the stuff that happened. But I just need to say that the imagination of Rotary knows no bounds. A thousand ducks going down the whitewater rafting course in Lee Valley raised over 5,000 pounds. The wheelie good idea in 1080 has raised from, I, I understand now, about 17,000 pounds. 1140s working with the torch and other things to make sure that the legacy continues. But over to Kevin, who will now tell you about wheel power. Thank you, Debbie. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, this clock is quite frightening, actually, counting down the time, if any of you have been on the stage. Uh, I'm delighted to be here this morning speaking to you at uh, National Conference. Um, as was said in the introduction, uh, I only flew in hot foot or hot wheeled from Helsinki on Friday evening to receive an email to say, uh, from our Chief Executive, uh, Martin McElhatton, who many of you know, uh, he's very ill and couldn't make the conference, uh, which means he's really upset. So he says hello to everybody, but uh, asked me to, to step in. And he said uh, in the email, can you go to Harrogate, please, on Sunday and speak to one or two people? <laughs> That's the sort of thing I get. But I'm delighted to be here. Thank you very much to give you a bit of an update on, on uh, what's going on with the wheel appeal, which you're all well aware of. This is a picture recently of me visiting uh, uh, Rotary Club of Holderness because uh, one of the things that's been going on quite a lot from my region, and I only live in Wakefield, so I'm not too far away from Harrogate, is going along, around a lot of the Rotary Clubs speaking about the wheel appeal. Uh, this was being presented a cheque by uh, Dorothy Hancock of Lincoln Colonia and District Governor Robin Mason of Rotary Club of Holderness, which we're very grateful for. So there's a lot of talking going on at the moment with Rotary Clubs. Um, you may well be aware that uh, Wheelpower, our organisation, which is British Wheelchair Sport, Wheelpower is the, the marketing and brand name of the organisation, um, uh, are managers and owners of the National Disability Sports uh, Centre Organisation for Sport and the Sports Centre at Stoke Mandeville. We're owners of the Stoke Mandeville Stadium, not the Stoke Mandeville Hospital, Stoke Mandeville Stadium, um, the National Centre for Disability Sport, and we are the birthplace of the Paralympic Games. Uh, they weren't called Paralympic Games in those days, back in 1948 at Stoke Mandeville, but certainly we hosted the Paralympic torch ceremony before it moved on to uh, London uh, for the opening of the Paralympic Games. It would be remiss of me not to spend just a moment talking about our founder, who was a Rotarian, uh, Professor Sir Ludwig Gutmann, 
He was the man that pioneered the thinking in terms of Paralympic sport. He was the guy that pioneered the thinking in terms of ensuring that people who were in wheelchairs could lead a constructive life, could do sport, could become tax players, to use his own words. And his famous quote there on the, on the screen is, if I ever did one good thing in my life, it was to introduce uh, sport uh, into the rehabilitation of people with disabilities. Um, there's been a rich history of rich five, six decades of sports development in this country. Uh, there's a picture of uh, some of the older people doing wheelchairs, many, many in wheelchairs doing archery many, many years ago. And you might like to note that they're the old chairs where we had the wheels on the front of the chair, uh, commonly called bath chairs. I could spend all day talking about this, so I won't go through lots and lots of imagery uh, about uh, historic wheelchair sports taking place at Stoke Mandeville. But of course, we have uh, six decades of development and expertise in this country, right up until that fantastic event last year, of course, the London Paralympic Games that I was personally involved in organising and feel very proud to be involved in it. Of course, the reason why I put this slide up is to remind you all of the tremendous achievements of our athletes that took place at that Games. And I can't miss out the great man, David Weir, uh, a wheelchair athlete, one of our own, homegrown, if you like, and it's quite interesting that uh, his coach came to me, came with me to speak at uh, Market Raisin Rotary uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, a lady, a formidable lady, I may add, and it was quite interesting, and I'm sure the Rotarians there listened to what she had to say with great interest. It was during and after the Paralympic Games in 2012 and the Olympics where meetings and discussions took place between Wheel Power and Rotary Olympic Committee. And it was agreed at that time to run uh, the Rotary Wheel Appeal, which I'm sure many of you in this room have heard about, uh, as, if you like, a legacy from the 2012 Paralympic Games. And the aims and the objectives from that appeal are to buy sports wheelchairs for new, newly disabled young people. It's not always wheelchairs, I may add. The, the phraseology is, uh, is quite general. Sometimes we were talking this morning uh, next year are the Winter Games in uh, Sochi in Russia and we might be buying ice sledges for people to take place, but certainly to provide equipment to support the development of sports and disabled people, providing sports facilities at Stoke Mandeville, our centre itself, and to provide opportunities across a whole range of events in this country. Of course, there are many things that spin off from uh, the Wheel Appeal, and one thing that, uh, that I'm keen to stress to you all is any money that you raise in your districts we will attempt, we will try our hardest to ensure that money gets spent in your district. If we can find disabled people in your district that can benefit from these uh, services, then we can forward it on. The Wheel Appeal identifies lots of volunteering opportunities. It helps spread the word about Rotary, the work of Rotary rather than the name Rotary. It helps promote the work of Wheel Power and, of course, will result in transforming lives through sport. Debbie mentioned earlier on the young lady here, Lydia Cross, who was a Rotary young citizen, who was the very first recipient of a Rotary wheelchair, Rotary Wheel Appeal wheelchair, who competed last year in the London Mini Marathon in uh, 2012. I apologise for the busyness of this slide, but it's very hard for me to try and sum up the certainly great partnership that's taken place that, between Wheel Power and Rotary. And I've just picked out a few points, and there are so many, too many to put on one slide. But certainly, uh, six district conference presentations by our organisation, over 40 clubs visited, and many more planned in the next couple of weeks, few weeks. Uh, lots of visits from Stoke Mandeville, from delegates, and indeed we hope to host some of you at the Interspano Unit Games next week at Stoke Mandeville, uh, and I look forward to seeing you there. The recent visit just mentioned by your National, National President John, uh, and, and we were very pleased that he managed to make it along, and we're looking forward to... Uh, lots more events taking place in the future. Some notable fundraising events this year, the district governor's run. I, like, I know that uh, the districts like their names mentioning, so the Great Duck Race and the White Water Canoe Royce, the Wheelie Good Idea in District 1080 by uh, District Governor Trevor Sayer, the London Marathon by DJ's Mike Thorne. My slides have disappeared because my time's up. <laughs> Which is why I said that I was really frightened of the clock. <laughs> but, but there are a lot of, a lot of fantastic partnership uh, pieces of work that have been going on. Almost £30,000 has been handed over to Willpower already and that money is being put to great use by the organisation. And I urge those of you that have not yet been involved to get involved if you possibly can. Willpower want to sincerely thank you all 
for the work that you've been doing on behalf of the Wheel, Wheel Appeal. And we hope in the future to be doing a lot more work with Rotary uh, for many years to come. Please, before I go, I've been instructed by Marty to tell you to visit Emma on uh, Stand 47 in the House of Friendship, where you can have your photograph taken with both the Olympic and the Paralympic torches. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Colin. And just a very small bit. I'll, I'll give this to Marty. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. And, Debbie, as an ordained minister, yes. <laughs> Roly Bain yes. has asked me to tell you right. that he's got a contract waiting for you outside to sign to um, join him in a double act. OK. <laughs> Can I, can I just say, by the way, that to uh, those of you that are planning to have a go at the tightrope walking, we've got some spare wheelchairs on our stand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much.